Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. It's always good to come to praise God. Because God is so good. The, the one thing about God, He never stops being good. You know, He, he always blesses our lives. Uh, one psalm that touched my heart this week, Psalms 84. And it says, and this is the Amplified Version. How lovely are your tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. Uh, my soul, this verse 2, yearns, yes, even pines, is homesick for the courts of the Lord. My heart, my flesh cry out and sing for joy to the living God. You can see in that passage how, you know, it's a cry out to the Lord. How, and that should be our heart. That should be our life, that we want to cry out. My heart, my flesh, to cry out and sing for joy to the living God. And that's what we talk about joy, that happiness. They think about the fact that we know the Creator. And the Creator cares about us. And is concerned about every area of our life. That's what's so awesome about God when we think about it, folks. When we think about He created all this, even before we was in our mom's belly, God knew us. He has a plan for our lives. And, and I look, I think back to, to you know, when, when, uh, back when Grandma took me to church. And to have that blessing, to sit on her knee. And that's the first time I remember going to church. I remember that because I remember she loved the Lord with all her heart. And that just kept trickling down and trickling down and Mom and, and through me. And I thank God that I can be in the house of the Lord. Thank God because there's so many other places you could be. You know, we're, we're not incarcerated. We're not doing this. We're not in a hospital room. We're not doing this. But to thank God that he brought us here and he's touched our lives and, 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 he, and he gives us a heart that loves him. A heart that wants to serve him. To cry out, God, we need you every day. And God, we thank you every day. In our prayer life, it's so good to just take that time and say, you know what, God, I'm not asking for anything today. I just want to take these few minutes and say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And tonight, as we open up this church service tonight, we're going to offer up praises, prayer requests that, you know, we believe they don't go just to the ceiling. They go beyond the ceiling. They go all the way up to the throne room. And God hears us. Oh, Father God, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I want to open this up tonight. And uh, I have a prayer request from a friend um, that has some family issues. And, and you know, the, the best part about it is that God is about family. Yes. God's all about. We was created his image. Can you think about just when Adam and Eve, God walked among cool of the day. Mm -hmm. Walked and wanted to spend time. With. That to me is just absolutely awesome that he wants to spend time you know walk with him every day and had a relationship he wanted a relationship and he wants that same relationship with us yes. you know it's I, I remember i love my dad so much that he he worked a lot and i just sometimes you know you just wanted to be around your dad and we was at a place one day and this guy he was an older guy but he looked so much like my dad he had the same kind of face he was a big guy and I don't know, I've just moved the tears. It's like, I wish I could just talk to Dad one more time. Mm -hmm. You know, he passed when I was a young man, but sometimes you just wish you could just talk to him one more time and, and he could see how your life progressed. And, and you say, Dad, thank you for sacrifices you made. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for getting up every day and going to work and providing for us. Yes. You know, and you just want to, Dad, I'd always kiss Dad, you know, when, I, when I'd go, uh, he always liked to pull you, and he always liked to kiss you right on the forehead. <laughs> you know, he always liked to kiss you right there on the forehead and tell you he loves you. That that was something he did. He just he loved because he'd been down. He was usually sitting and and he kind of been, and he kissed you. That that was his big thing, and tell you he loved you. And I and I remember that day, just before he died, he wanted to go to church. He had a lot of health issues, and I remember, 
He said, Tim, I want to go to church this morning. Got his suit on, went to church, and the pastor was getting up to speak. He raised his hand. He said, yes, Mr. Hack. He said, I got something I want to say. And he stood up. It was hard for him to get up, but he got up by himself. You know, a little, little, little bit of help, but he got up and stood straight and stood up there and says, you know what? I want to thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to thank the Lord for being in the house mm -hmm. of the Lord today. Yes. You know, he didn't give a long, drawn-out sermon. Mm -hmm. And you know what his favorite song was? He wanted to set his funeral. And the lady sang, Precious Lord. Oh, yeah. That was his favorite song. Mm -hmm. So I just want to thank the Lord today. So we're going to open up for prayer requests and praises tonight. Okay. Yes, Praise the Lord. That that is so true. Yeah, we, that that is so important to lift them up, and so important to realize whose child you are, who you belong to. You know that get that revelation of that. You know who you belong to, child of the King. And and I just I just just I'm I'm so thankful that you know God chose us. I mean, you think about that. You know that God wanted us. You know God loves us. And, you know, and he wants all his children to come home. It's just like your own kids. You know, you want all them to serve the Lord one day. Oh, yeah. You know, they may be far apart. But, you know, the, the talks about the shepherd, 
you know, the 99's here, and that one that's lost, he's going to go out, yep. you know. And, and, you, and, you, and you, when you look at God, you look how tender he deals with people, you know. He wants them home. I always think about the prodigal son, you know. How did he know which day his son was coming home? He didn't know that. He just kept looking every day. He go out every day. Today, my son's coming home. Today, my son's coming home. I'm going to get up every morning expecting today because he's praying. You know he had to be praying every day. Pray, bring him up, turn him around, turn him around, touch his life. And that one day he went out and he saw that figure walking down the road. That's my son. That's my son. And he runs to him. That, that tells me how much he loved him. He run to him, and the son had, you know, he had this all speech already, you know, Dad, I, you know, I sinned against you and have an honor and so forth. And it's like, it's like, Father said, uh, uh, none of that. <laughs> none of that. You're home now. You're home now. You're with me now. Let's kill the fatted calf. Bring him his ring. Bring him his shoes. He's home now. Because you know what? He's still my son. He was still my son. As far off as he was, he was still my son. And we don't ever want to get lose sight of that, you know. But he's still my child, you know. Never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. The thing about it, you know, the Bible said he's married to the backslider. Even that person goes away. We think about how all the disciples fled. And, and the Bible said all of them. Now, fled doesn't mean they just walked away casually. They, they ran off. But you know what? Jesus didn't bring that up to them. You ever notice that? He didn't bring, when they come back, he didn't bring it up to them. And Peter, did not, he didn't bring it up. He says, you know, listen, Peter, that wasn't very nice of you to do that to me. You know, he didn't bring it up one time to him. You ever think about that? He didn't throw it up. He said, you know what? I'm still here. Y'all had to get an understanding. I said I'm going to rise on the third day. And guess what? I rose on the third day. That's all you need to know. That I, I kept my word. I kept my word. That's all I ask you to do. When I came down here, just to believe me. That's all I ask you. Because what I speak comes from the Father. You, you want to know what God the Father is like? Look at me. Okay? I'm, 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 I'm God too. I understand. I know you got doubts and everything, but you know what? I'm still God. And I'm still going to be here for you. And I was willing to go all the way to the cross. You know, think about it. He was obedient even to the death of the cross. Yes. And we always know how he died with his arms outstretched. That always gets me. This is how much he loved you. Arms outstretched Why? Come here. Come here. I'm here. But you got to will and accept what I did for you. Yeah. Are you willing to accept that? Hallelujah. Glory. All right. Glory to God. Amen. Someone else. Uh, no, that's all right. <laughs> Go That's right. That's right. Uh, starts burning, burning again for the Lord, um, and also pray for the worship team or Easter Gate House of Prayer as we go up to Ankeny again for the prayer burn. Uh, our session is four to six in the afternoon. Uh, that will take what the Lord is doing here with us to further the kingdom and stand in the gap. Uh, one of the main things that was brought forth uh, here last weekend was unity in the body of Christ, and uh, this is a bridge builder. Um, then I got immediately, uh, right after that, I got to head over to the west side. Uh, one of the girls uh, that, that I got to work with uh, at a youth group I was at before uh, as a part of the worship team in another part of town, and they're doing some more. They're doing a night of worship and stuff, so I'm going to go over there and support them and stuff, too. So Hallelujah. Yeah, I thought the move. Um, I said, Lord, how, how long am I supposed to be doing this? What am I, what am I supposed to be doing? And uh, when I was 27, I gave my heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. For, for real. <laughs> Not yeah. that game playing stuff. Right. And uh, I said, Lord, I screwed up the first half of my life. And uh, I want to give you the second half of my life. Well, Hallelujah. The second half of my life was up uh, when I was 54 uh, a few years back. So I inquired of the Lord. It says, well, I'm done the second half of my life. What do you want me to do? He says, well, because you're obedient with the first uh, part of what you said you would give back, I'm going to give you double. Hallelujah. From what you lost the first 27 years, I'm going to give you a double portion. Hallelujah. So that puts me at 81. And I know we're not we're not supposed to know our days that are numbered or anything else like that. But he says, live like you still got another 11, 12, 13, 15, 
Highland Lake. Highland Lake. Yeah, it'll be 18 years. So I'm running with it, and he's good, he's a blessing. Hallelujah. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. That's awesome. You know, it's, 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 it's not how we start, but it's how we finish. You know, and, and so many times in the Bible, you know, the Christians, they had the ups and downs. And, you know, David had his issues. You know, uh, Samson had his issues. But you know what? Remember me. The thing about it, they understood one thing. Despite it all, God's still God no matter what. And I can call upon him. That's one good thing about the Lord is that, you know what? We can get far away from him, but we can call, you know, call out to him. And he hears us. You know, it's just like your children. I'm telling you, that phone rings in the middle of the night. You know what we're going to do? We're going to answer that phone. Oh, yeah. What do you need? What do you need? Because I'm still your parent. I'm still here for you. I'm still loving you. I'm still going to pray for you every day. Yes. You know, because we, the best thing you can do is teach your kids to love God. You know, I mean, you can buy this and buy that, but teach them to know God, because that'll get them through a long way in their life. Hallelujah. Okay, someone else. Okay. Well, if you all stand, we'll go ahead and go to prayer. Father God, you are a good God. And Father God, our hearts and our flesh cry out yes. to you yes, because we need you more every day. God, we thank you for being in us. Father God, we thank you for being Emmanuel, God with us. Father God, we couldn't make it without you. Father God, you opened our eyes this morning and allowed us to get up. We thank you for our health. We thank you for our food and our clothes and the automobiles and, and being able to work and, and being able to raise our arms and praise you no matter what the circumstance may be. Sometimes in our life, sometimes things may get dark, but you are still the light of the world. Oh, Father God, we ask you to be with Pastor Nathan and be with Sally as they get some refreshing. Oh, Lord, they, they're on the front line. They serve here faithfully at church. We ask you to bless them. This uh, talks about, Mike talked about unity and the prayer prayer and Shelly and all, all these items, Lord. We're going to bring them up to you because it's all about worshiping. It's all about having a relationship with you. That's what matters most. And Father God, that that we can pray in the Spirit. That Lord, as they talked about heaven being high and lifted up, that you are lifted up and there, there's books in heaven, that we can pray in the Spirit and see the angels, the minister angels move. Hallelujah. That they will move on our behalf, Lord. That we can pray to you. That our prayers go all the way up to the throne room. And God, you hear us. That God, you care about us. God, you love us. The Bible says that you love us with an everlasting love. Let us never forget that. No matter what may happen, let us never forget that and realize that you love us more and more every day. Oh, Father God, tonight we ask you to just come in a mighty way. And Lord, we just ask the Bible is true. The Word of God is true. The Word of God can change lives. And Father God, let us always be obedient to your Word. And tonight, Lord, we realize you are our counselor. You are our mighty God. You are a King of kings and a Lord of lords. We ask you to be with those that could not be here tonight that you would watch over them. Lord, I just, oh, I just keep seeing this. Like, it's almost like a neon that you love us, that you love us, that you love us. Let us never forget that. I just keep saying those words, love. And that's what it's about. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Father God, thank you tonight. We praise you tonight. We lift you up. Hallelujah. The Bible said if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. And we're going to lift you up. And we're going to praise your holy name. 
We're going to give you all the glory to your name. And we thank you in your wonderful holy name. We pray amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you have a cell phone, we ask you to put it on vibrate or uh, turn off if you would. Okay? And they're still wanting some help in the sound booth, so if you're interested in that, contact Michael. This is for a rigorous interview. Okay? Okay? All right? Okay? All right. We're going to take the offering, and if Brother Ron would come up, please. Be so kind to pray over the offering. Appreciate it.
Oh, 
presence. Let's give him a hand clap, please. Thank give you. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you, Brother Mike. And, uh, Mike, for sound system, we appreciate the fact that the Lord is here. We appreciate the fact that the Lord send those willing workers that have a heart to serve Him. That's what it's about, to talk about, I love your face, to, to talk about, I love your kisses, your embrace, I love your presence. That's what it's about. You know, uh, <clears throat> when I was coming home uh, from work today, one of the songs that have always just touched my heart was Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. That song just came out, it says, Oh soul, are you worried and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, a life more abundant and free. Hallelujah. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Oh, yeah. His glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and will follow him there. Or us, sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. Hallelujah. His word shall not fail you. He promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Yes. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That's what it's about. When we look, I'm going to go back here to Psalms 84. And we mentioned a couple of verses. Psalms 84 is going to be out of the Amplified. How lovely are your tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul yearns, yes, even pines, is homesick for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out and sing for joy to the living God. Verse 3, yes, the sparrow has found a house, the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my king and my God. Yeah. That's really what it got. We got to make it personal. My king and my God. Yes, Hallelujah. Verse 4. Blessed, happy, fortunate to envy are those who dwell in your house and your presence. They will be singing your praises all day long. Yeah. Hallelujah. Say I pause. You got to say I pause and calmly think of that. Hallelujah. Blessed. Verse 5. Happy, fortunate to be envied is a man whose strength is in you. Yes, Hallelujah. Whose heart are the highways to Zion. Verse 6. Pass into the valley of weeping, back up. Pass in the valley, sometimes we gotta pass through that weeping. Those times that, that, that don't seem like we're gonna make it through, but they make it to a place of springs, their early rain also fills the pools with blessings. You know, one thing we always wanna look at is no matter what we're going through, God is still with us. We need to never forget that. And that's what I think, we get our eyes off Jesus and we look at the circumstance. You know, God's far above the circumstance. Hallelujah. If we look here in uh, Jeremiah 32, verse 17, again, out of the Amplified. These verses, the word of God can get you through where nothing else will. The word of God. And you can just hear the cry of Jesus' heart so often. Just believe me, folks. Just believe me. Now, I came from heaven. The throne room. You want to know what God is like? Look at me. Jesus said so often, you know, and, 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 and look at these words in Jeremiah 32, 17. Alas, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Hallelujah. Here it is, folks. There is nothing too hard. Come on. Nothing too hard or too wonderful for you. Let's take a look at that. See, I like to look up words. One thing about it, when we think about nothing, 
That's what we're talking about. When we're looking at nothing, absolutely nothing. Hallelujah. Nothing means not anything. No single thing. Not a thing. Nil. Zero. Not. And it keeps going on. It says zilch. Zip. Nothing. That's what it says. Nothing is too hard or too wonderful, you know, for you. Now think about that. Nothing. Oh, God, I don't know. I got some situations, a financial situation. I got a family situation. You know, I, I got these situations with my kids. Well, right here, it says there's nothing too hard. And we got to really learn to look at that. Let, let's go to Isaiah. I want to go to Isaiah 61. Let's take a look at that. Isaiah 61. Hallelujah. Popular. Popular verses. You got that right. Isaiah 61. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at Isaiah 61. Now, in Luke, we know that Jesus actually stand up and read this. This first part here. Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, the poor, and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up and heal the broken heart. Yes. Hallelujah. How many times he had a heart broke? Mm -hmm. I remember years ago, I went over to another church there in the state. He started talking about broken hearts. He said, you know, God can heal your broken heart. We just need to give him all the pieces. Give him every part of it back to him. He can heal it and make it better than before. I remember years ago, I, I had a bad fall and I, and I, and I busted the, the, the tendons that connect the thigh muscle to the knee. And I had to go to surgery. And I talked to the doctor about it. He said, man, we ain't never had a case like this. He said, I want to be able to show it to my students. He was teaching doctor over Iowa City, you know. But he said, we can make you better than new. I said, we can make you so you can walk. And I tell you what, it didn't look good at the start. But I tell you what, God used that man. You know, the thing about doctors, God can use them. God put the wisdom in there, and I tell you what, I'm standing up walking today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because God is good. God can heal that leg. God can heal your broken heart if we just let him do it. That's the thing. God just wants to get in your life. God wants to make your life. And some people resist. Some people resist. Don't resist the Lord. He's got your best interest. Like he says here, he sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives and the opening of the prison and of, and of the eyes of those who are bound. So many people are bound up by something. Uh -huh. You may be bound up by the past. Uh -huh. The one thing about the past, Paul understood that. Forgetting those things are behind me. Some people let that yesterday, you know, keep, keep haunting them, keep haunting them. You know what? God is a present help right now. You know, there's nothing we can do about yesterday. We can't go back. You can't return back kids and, and come back up again. God says today, because those who keep looking back, they're unfit for the kingdom of God. They keep looking back. Well, I did this yesterday, but hey, Jesus, okay, that has happened. Okay, come with me now. Come follow me now. Yeah. Moses had that. He had to have those feelings. Those first 40 years, you know, you, 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 uh, he, he was raised up. You remember he raised up in the king's house, and then he went out, out, out of Egypt for 40 years. I always thought about that. 40 years being in the backside of the desert, out of the luxury, with the sheep, out there. And I'm sure, you know, the first few years was bad enough. But after one decade, oh, man. Where are you, God? Ten years gone by. Oh, he surely forgot about me. Family hadn't visited me. Wonder if they still alive. I'm out here tending sheep. I was in luxury. Man, I had the good eats up there, and I was doing good, had the finest clothes, but now I'm on the backside of the desert. Twenty years goes by. Man, now I, it's got to be over. Oh, man, God can't use me. God can't use me. Hey, you know, I'm sure he had those tears and had to, what's going on? But you know what? 30 years went by. Now we think, oh, man, it's, I'm done. I'm done. God can't possibly use me. You know, now I'm getting 70 years old. Oh, no, it's getting too bad. Now, another 10 years go by. And we know about the burning bush. I'm going to turn aside. Hey, you know what happened? Hey, you know what? 
him Moses. And see what I love about God, God called Moses twice. So wasn't nobody else out there to know who it was. But he wanted to make sure, Moses, Moses, hey, you, I'm calling you. I called your name twice. So there's no mistake out here, right? And Moses, I got to turn aside. And you know what? Hey, Moses, you know what? You're standing right here. It's holy ground. You know why it's holy ground? Because the God of heaven and earth is right here. That's what makes it holy. Yes. He said, you know what? Your life isn't over yet. Because you know what? The great I am. In, in, interesting, he declared himself, who sent me? Tell him I am. Not that I used to be, that I might be. I am. Isn't that something? I am. I am your present help. You're going to go back and you're going to deliver the people of Israel. That's what you're going to do. You're going to deliver my people and they're going to come out and worship me on this mountain. That's what's going to happen. I don't know, 80 years? I don't know. I can't speak well. You don't worry about that. I'll take care of that. Sometimes we make so many excuses. You know, I, I, I teach school, and, and you know, you, sometimes you get individuals that think about, you know, well, Tim, you know, what do you think about the glass half full, half empty? And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're a pessimist or optimist, I said, well, that really don't make a lot of difference because you can fill the glass back up. You know, <laughs> it doesn't mean you can't pour nothing else into it. You, you're missing the whole point. Let me say, that's not what it's based on, whether the glass is half empty. That's not what it's based on. It's based on one who made the water to put in the glass. That's what it is. You know, people say, oh, Tim, I don't know the economy. All the stuff is fluctuating. I don't know what's going to happen about this or that. I said, who are we trusting? We trusting the government or we trusting God? Come on. Hallelujah. If God take all the amazing people out in the desert and fed them all, don't you think he could feed you and take care of you? Yep. That's what I'm saying. I think what we got to do is get back to trust in God. And he's saying right here, hallelujah, in verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of his favor. Hallelujah. We got favor on us. Because you think about, well, I don't understand why that happened. I remember we went out on a trip, and we got there late Friday night, and we went out there, and the guy didn't even know nothing about it. But, and, and we know it had to be the Lord touching people's heart. He says, we just want to tell you, you got your room upgraded. Upgraded? Who did that? I don't know. Now you got a beach view, so you can see the, 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 the ocean every morning. I said, who did it? We don't even know who did that. All we know is fine with us. You know? That's a blessing from us. Talk about favor. That's what favor is. When we talk about God blesses us with favor, folks, we got so many blessings. Favor means in the Bible, gaining approval, acceptance, or special benefits or blessings. Yeah. When we think about that, hallelujah, that, that you know, um, Annette Powell, she once said this. She said, other people may have more talent education or experience but God's favor can cause you to go places you cannot go on your own. Uh -huh. How many times did he open up doors that you knew it was God? Uh -huh. How many times he's provided for you that you knew it was God? Yes. They said, hey, you know what? They, they don't have no more of that on sale. Hey, they don't have no more. We came in the store just for that. There's a clerk over there. Oh yeah, we got some in the back. Come on. Let me go look in the back. And see what I got. And guess what? We got some. That's favor. Well, he, he can give you a blessing. It looks impossible. You know, sometimes, you know, we, we, we look still. We have a tendency to look at our circumstance rather than look at our God. And that's what God wants us to do is keep looking toward him. Keep looking up. And Stephen Hawkins, you know, passed away today. You know, brilliant scientist. And that's what he says. Keep looking to the stars. And don't look at his feet. You know, he said, not in this paraphrase, but look up. He understood that. You need to look up. Look to the stars. Look up. And look up past the stars. Look to the one who made the stars. Hallelujah. Look to the one who created. He's more than created. You think about the creator God. If he tells this star, you know, you stay here until I tell you otherwise, what makes us think he can't, tear, can't, can't take care of us? Right. Somehow we get off the track on that part. But the verse 2 proclaimed the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of his favor, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Yeah. Think about that. To comfort all. That's what when the Bible says all, that's what it means, all who mourn. Yeah. Hallelujah. To grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament, a garden, a diadem, a beauty instead of ashes. Uh -huh. The oil of joy instead of mourning. The garment expressive of praise instead of heavy burden and a failing spirit. That they may be called 
oaks of righteousness, lofty, strong, and magnificent, distinguished for uprightness, justice, right standing with God, the planning of the Lord that he may be glorified. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at that and just realize what he's given you. Sometimes it looks like, oh man, my life's ashy. If you've ever been around ashes, I remember I hauled furniture, and we hauled some stuff out of a house where one wing had burned up. And I tell you what, the smell of smoke and the ashes and the wood, you know, it, it was just a hard place to work. And I, every time I think about this scripture, that comes to mind. But oh, let me tell you, out of those ashes, it looks that God can turn around and make beauty. That's it. You know, sometimes we just got to get a perspective that God can turn this situation around where nobody else could. God can turn the ship around and say, you know what, just follow me. We always remember when, when, when he was in the boat and, 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 and the storm come up, that, that always touches me. Because here's was guys that was used to the water. They was used to being out there. They understood what storms, but there's something different because they was afraid for their life. The one thing they seem to forget, who did you have on board with you? Who did you have on board? You really think you're not going to get to the other side if Jesus was there. That's the big difference. We just got to realize, well, somebody go better wake him up. You know, you know we got to wake him up. He's down there sleeping. And I know, you know, if you ever been woke out of dead sleep, somebody panic. You know, it's funny how Jesus doesn't seem to get irritated over stuff like we think. You know, somebody woke us up, what are you doing waking me up? You know, I was sleeping so good, you know. But, you know, he got up and he calmed the storm. Peace be still. Don't y'all realize y'all could have done the same thing? Uh-huh. Same thing. You got Jesus on board. I'm on board with you. If you only had faith. Now, Jesus lives in us. We could do the same thing. That's right. We can calm that storm. Yes. Those situations, people talking about it, condemn that tongue. So we have the same. We can say the same thing. You know, we are supposed to be the head and not the tail. Mm-hmm. Right? And we got to realize how blessed we are. We're children of the king. I remember there's a point in my life, and, and I'm telling you, you know, you can get down so far, and you don't think, man, I'm, I'm never climbing up. Mm-hmm. You can think that. And I'm just being honest, folks. It was a time where I, I you know, was so hungry that you feel like just the only place you can eat is, is find something out of the dumpster. I've been down there. You know, people say, oh, you got it made, Tim. Now I said, brother, you don't know where I come from. Uh, Let me tell you the other side. And I remember one of my <coughs> favorite things was, <coughs> excuse me, I always liked cheeseburger pizza, you know, that was a favorite. And, and I was living in a, in, in a place and it was a, a multiple building, d- different families. <clears throat> and the kids would come up and play. And they brought a pizza upstairs. <clears throat> and the kids, you know how sometimes they take one bite off of it? And they, and they put it on the trash can. The, the, they put it on the trash and they went back downstairs. <clears throat> Let me tell you, I was hungry, bud. Mm. I was hungry. Let me tell you, that's, it was still warm and it smelled good. <laughs> I got to be honest. So I remember, it was just on top of the trash, wasn't down there. And I remember, folks, <clears throat> I remember picking it up, smelling it, and I mean, I was hungry, man. And you know what? It came to me. I put it back in the trash. You know why? I said, wait a minute, this, this is all backwards. Uh-huh. I'm a child of the king. Yes. And I'm eating out of the trash can, it ain't happening. Come on now. I said, whatever it takes to get us out of here, we're going to get out of here. Come on. And as determination, I thank God never been in that position again. But I tell you what, <clears throat> it comes to a point, if we're a child of the king, can you imagine somebody, what, the, you know, that their, their parents are worth uh, $500 million and their kids are yeah, trash? Something's wrong with that. Yeah. Something's wrong with that, right? That picture would not go over. But we're a child of the king. Yeah. The God that created heaven and earth and his children living like that. No, there's something wrong. I'm not saying there's not some circumstances. But let me tell you, when Jesus is on board, hey, I tell you what. The Bible says, this is my life verse. <clears throat> Psalm 37, 25 says, David said this. He lived 70 years. He said, I was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. Mm-hmm. And uh, brother, let me tell you, I'm not going to be begging bread because my God's going to come through. 
Mom used to say, what do people do without the Lord? What do they do without the Lord? She understood that. So many blessings came to those people who just said, you know what? I'm going to believe you. I think about Daniel in the lion's den. <clears throat> you know, when they had the law of the Medes and Persians, he got thrown in there because he was praying to his God three times a day. And they said, you can't do that no more. And they threw him in the lion's den. You know, you don't, you don't get that. You know, the, the, the king signed the paper, signed the law in. And now the king realized he'd done a foolish thing at the time. But Daniel had to go in the lion's den. You know, and, and I mean, the king said, is your God able to deliver you? Is your God able? Daniel didn't make an issue. He went in the lion's den. You know, and the king, boy, he was up but fasting and said, we got to figure a way to deliver Daniel. Came in the morning. You ever notice when he came to the morning, Daniel, Daniel, you okay? You know, it's like Daniel doesn't have a worry at all. Hey, I'm good, king. Yeah, I'm fine. You know why? Because God shut the lion's mouth. Yeah. That's what. They didn't touch me. You know, they was just out there sleeping. Didn't bother me at all. Okay. Bring them out of there. And the very people that passed the law, that wanted him to do that, they threw the, all of them in there, right? Somebody said, well, Tim, maybe the lions weren't hungry. Well, that's what the Bible said. Before they got to the bottom of the cage, they got ate up. Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying. So they must have been pretty hungry. But because Daniel decided to trust God. See, it still starts in 1 Daniel. Daniel purposed in his heart not to file himself in the king's meat. Daniel understood that. He had to purpose in his heart. Paul understood that. Oh, that I may know him. They understood that. It's a total dedication to God. You know, we sang that song, I Surrender All. We sang that song. I, I was on the radio, the, I Surrender All. You know, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. You know, I'd rather have that. One person, don't sing those songs if you don't believe it. Come on. Don't sing them. Because God understands your heart. He knows whether you believe it or not. Yeah. But it's all about God. And I'm going to go ahead and read a couple more. Verse 4, and this is Isaiah 61. And they shall rebuild the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations and renew the ruined cities, devastations, Devastation of many generations, and shall stand ready and feed your flocks and foreigners, shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you should be called the priests of the Lord. People will speak of you as ministers of God. You should eat the wealth of nations. The glory, once in your capital, should be yours. Instead of your former shame, hallelujah, you should have twofold recompense. Twofold, double blessing. Instead of dishonor and reproach your people, you shall rejoice in the portion. Therefore, in the land, thou shalt possess double what they had forfeited. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That deserves a hand clap. You're going to get a double blessing, folks. What you gave up. To become, to walk with the Lord. He understands those sacrifices. He understands those. You know, we think about those years where God can stake and restore and give you more than what you had but th th at the beginning. He can give you more. He did that with Job. You remember he lost his sheep. He got double at the end. Got his kid, got another 10 kids. You know, his daughters were the fairest in the land. God don't forget. He knows where you come from. One thing we should never say about people, we're just thinking about this. Hallelujah. We should never, ever despise small beginnings and never despise, well, uh, that, that, that person ain't never going to accomplish something. How do you know that? How do you know that? So many times in the Bible, people have thought, well, God can't use him. He can uh -huh. You remember when Samuel came down there to pick a, pick a replacement for Saul? You know, and all of a sudden, he first saw the good-looking alien. Oh, man, that's got to be it. He's tall, good-looking like Saul was. Nope, they ain't, they ain't the right one. Nope. Ain't the right one. Nope. And he passed them all through. He said, that, nope, nope, that's not it. Now, who he got left? Oh, he's out there with the sheep. He's just out there with the sheep. That surely can't be him. He's out there with the sheep. Bring him here. Woo. I'm not going to eat till you bring him here. Uh -huh. And boy, he comes. There he is. There he is right there. We're going to anoint him right now. That's what we're going to do right now. The one you thought wouldn't amount to nothing became King David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Didn't happen right away. He had some battles there. But you know what? He became king. Because God is faithful. 
And the fact is, we always want to remember that, that God is faithful. He can come through. He can make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. And let us never forget that. Hallelujah. Father God, we want to thank you tonight that you are faithful. We want to thank you tonight that it's in the beginning God. Hallelujah. The Bible starts in the beginning God. How far back does that go? I don't know, but it goes back in the beginning. Hallelujah. And in Revelation it says you are the beginning and the ending. The Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, let us never forget what you've done for us in the past. Never let us forget what you're doing for us now. And let us never forget what you got planned for us in the future. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. It's going to be bigger and greater things. Because we serve a God that loves us with an everlasting love. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That rejoices over us with singing. Yes. Hallelujah. Just like a baby rocking his arm. I love you. I love you. I love you. And that's what it's about. God's love is never going to end. That's why the Bible said God is love. Yes. Yes. And Father God, we thank you tonight that we've been able to come to this house of worship and worship you. Worship the King of kings, yes. the Lord of lords, the mighty God, yes. the everlasting Father. Uh -huh. Lord, we want to thank you. Lord, we want to praise you. We ask you to watch over each and every one of us as we yes. go to our homes and bless us again. Bless us again. Continue to bless our lives so we can meet here again. We thank you in your wonderful holy name. We pray amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.